Back on Sports Pit, Pauly and Teddy, deep dive, NFL. Chip Kelly said Kaepernick's going to play. He didn't uh, tip his hand about who's going to start, although it's uh, been a ton of San Francisco money here as the Packers were favored. Now the Niners are favored with the Kaepernick news, Teddy. Oh, yeah. I mean, this line's moved uh, as much as four points in some spots. We saw Green Bay opening in the one to two range. Now it's San Fran uh, in the minus one to minus two range. And again, we've talked about it multiple times here on Sportsbit. Big difference in the preseason between minus one and minus two. Ones and twos are both key numbers at this time of the year. Here's a quote uh, from Chip Kelly uh, talking about Kaepernick. He's not saying specifically what playing time he's getting, but we'll see. He's on track. We're excited and we're hopeful he'll be ready to go. I'm not going to put the cart before the horse. We have a system. When we get to Friday, we'll know exactly from head athletic trainer Jeff Ferguson who's up and who's down. If he's up, he is going to play. Kelly continued. He's been sharp with all things mentally. There's always a little, when you take some time off from the physical, there may be a ball that was behind from a timing standpoint, but there's no indecision where he doesn't know where he's going. Let me ask you this, Paulie. Any chance that Colin Kaepernick is the 49ers starting quarterback on opening day? No, no chance. No. They don't want him there, and uh, they're, they, they, they tried to trade him. They couldn't work it out with Denver. No chance he's the starter. I disagree. I think he's still alive to win that job simply because oh, come on. he's probably the best He's the best quarterback on the roster. No, I don't know. He's and, not. No, he's not. And, not right now. He hasn't played in a game and either. And who, who's a better fit to run Chip Kelly's offense than Colin Kaepernick on that team? Well, uh, Kaepernick th- four years ago or three years ago or the guy who played last year? The and guy who played a, last a, year. He's got a dead arm. Hopeless. I think he's live to win that job. Well, I think San Fran is doing what they can to keep him live to win that job. Let's just put it that way. All right. Why Again, why they abandoned the pistol years ago, I'll never understand either. Uh, to the Bears, they already remember, they already lost their starting center for the season. 19 guys are injured, two are limited, and two more guys are resting, and one's out for personal reasons. What's going on here in Chicago? Yeah, they're without 24 players on their 90-man roster. And as you mentioned, already without their projected starting center, season-ending injury, now with a right guard, Kyle Long, is dealing with a labrum issue. We don't know yet how long he's going to be out. John Fox was evasive when asked if he would be ready for the opener. Quote, it doesn't really matter what I think. There are medical people involved, and when he's cleared, uh, he'll play. Uh, but, you know, and, and of course, the old unnamed sources, one said that, He'll no chance he'll be back for the regular season. The other one said he's confident he'll be back for the start of the regular season. The bottom line right now for Chicago is this team is decimated with injuries in training camp, and teams that are decimated with injury in training camp are not what I would consider to be bet on squads when it comes to August games. Some injuries in Baltimore. What do you think there? Well, yeah. I mean, we got, uh, I'll call it cluster injuries in the secondary. Uh, three cornerbacks, Kyle Arrington, Maurice uh, Kennedy uh, and Gerard Powers all out. Safeties Matt Elam uh, and Kendrick Lewis uh, are all out. None of these guys, if not all, or sorry to say most of these guys, if not all of them, are unlikely to play against the Lions, and yet Baltimore's been taking the money, at least in early betting action. And this was a big story when you woke up on the West Coast yesterday. The Chargers pull their offer to Joey Bosa, third overall pick. They're trying to get a new stadium. This doesn't help. They are a cheap organization. It, uh, it's a signing bonus. Give them his money. And they they had no. they, they knew in September. They knew in September they were taking this guy. They did it with Rivers. They did it with Merriman. They did it with LT. They did it with Quentin Jammer. This is a cheap organization. It's a different management team now than it was from those guys. Bosa's the idiot here, not the Chargers. Okay, Bosa's asking for something that San Diego hasn't done before, that 29 of the 31 players who have signed – didn't get what he got. The player just or didn't get what he asked for. The player directly ahead of him in the draft, Carson Wentz, didn't get what he asked for. The player directly behind him in the draft didn't get what Bosa's asked for. Um, it's a bad situation right now. This certainly isn't going to help San Diego in any way, shape, or form. As you mentioned, they're trying to get a new stadium. This is kind of a disaster, and they need his pass rush. Make no mistake about it. When you have a rookie that's not in camp by week three, he's not going to be a productive rookie. I don't blame San Diego for taking the offer over the table, uh, off the table, but I got a feeling 
Polly, this situation might get ugly. Uh, it's already ugly. It might even get uglier before it gets better. Too late for that. Yeah, the Bills, uh, one step forward, two steps back. They get Watkins back and Manny Lawson. Looks like he could go against the Redskins, but they lose some other guys. Oh, yeah, three key players uh, on uh, practice yesterday. He was starting right tackle. Jordan Mills got hurt. Their top slot cornerback, uh, Nickel Roby, uh, got hurt. And the number three wide receiver, Marquise Goodwin, uh, got a concussion. You know, um, we have uh, another team, maybe not as bad as the Bears. And again, when you have the non-high profile injury, when it's not Des Bryant sitting out, I mean, he doesn't cover it. Bills are banged up, really banged up right now. And the thought process from a couple of sources in Buffalo is saying all they care about this week is to get through Friday's game without any more injuries. All right, and this is something to watch. Good news with the Vikings. Teddy Bridgewater back throwing to practice. He has the sore shoulder. They open up U.S. Bank Stadium Sunday against San Diego. Did you hear the story about U.S. Bank Stadium? They're saying it's going to be louder than the Metrodome. Way louder than the Metrodome. And I believe the Metrodome was the loudest stadium in the NFL at one point, wasn't it? They were, well, when they were good, yeah. yeah. So was, this is yeah. Uh, all of a sudden. Well, it, it's worth noting that you may want to start adjusting Minnesota into that home field edge. We've seen some teams get worse when it comes to a home field edge of the new stadium. Let's say the 49ers, for example, where all the fans were priced out and all the corporate bigwigs were priced in yep. to the new stadium. That's not going to be the case at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota. That's going to be a loud and impressive venue. Can't wait to see it. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. I don't know if anyone pays attention to these uh, promos we do for our show, but I hope they are because uh, Mike Brenner, we're just flat out killing it in August. We Both are. of us, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You got anything to add to that? Uh, I, there's nothing else to there's add. There's nothing really to add, but we're going to do it again today, Thursday, August 25th, and I'll tell you what, a couple more picks I'm liking. What do you think, Mike Brenner? Absolutely. Check out this card. There's about five spots that look like gold. I'd actually recommend that Paulie and Teddy themselves watch our show today. They probably do.